In this video, I'm going to explain duality and how it has led to a world in chaos. And this is why you must stay human if you want to evolve and ascend. Hi, I'm Saratoga Ocean, and I work together with an interdimensional, interuniversal, and extraterrestrial force known as Telstar, along with Archangel Michael. So we have a lot to talk about today, starting with the subject of duality. Now, I've had a number of questions about duality from people who want to know exactly what it means. So let's start there, and then I will show you how it has made us incredibly vulnerable to what is happening right now. There are two things to consider. One is the natural laws of creation, and the other is a false version of those laws. And that false version is duality. In the natural laws of creation, we have what appear to be opposites, but in truth are highly compatible magnetic spheres of life and magnetic creation energy. An example of this would be yin and yang, which are the masculine and feminine principles of creation. Yin, which is the feminine principle, represents the inward flow of energy. And yang, which is the masculine principle, represents the outward flow of energy. Together, they form the basis of all creation in nature. A perfect example of this would be our breath. The inhale represents a yin form of energy, whereas the exhale represents a yang form of energy. These two energies are highly magnetic and absolutely compatible with each other. In fact, they are so compatible that together they form the whole cycle of our experience of breath. Together they function as one and exist as the giver of life. The movement of celestial spheres is another example. A planet rotates as it orbits around its central star. This creates a beautiful synergy of day and night that gives rise to an amazingly beautiful perfection in nature. You could say that the nighttime is like a yin experience, whereas the daytime is a yang experience of energy. But with night and day together, the planet as a whole is potentially able to support a perfect climate that can give rise to life of all kinds. Once again, we see a seamless unity and grace between these two manifestations of day and night. Darkness and light in nature do not fight with each other. They are not in conflict. And together they create the most amazing beauty. Throughout nature, we see that all of life is a manifestation of these powerful yin and yang forces of the masculine and feminine principles of creation. Now, oftentimes people confuse this with duality. But here's the difference. Duality is all about conflict. It's about opposition. Duality is the result of an attempt to create an artificial version of the original yin and yang forces of creation. But the creator of all that is, the source of all creation, which is infinite love, is the only thing that can produce those yin and yang forces. So here's how duality got created. A weird experiment was tried in the cosmos to see what would happen if things were known as what they are not instead of being known as what they are. Now, I cannot give you all the details about this in a YouTube video. I have an entire course on this, and if you want to check it out, I'll link it down below. But for now, I can tell you that this experiment created a fake version of so-called yin and yang. That fake version looks like this. Now we have things like love and not love, alive and not alive. So the idea of is and is not create what I call a massive distortion and lie about the purity of true magnetism. So overall, we now have a universe of things that can be recognized by what they're not instead of by what they are. Now, the best, most fundamental example of duality 
exists in the relationship between fear and anger. Fear masquerades as a yin force and anger masquerades as a yang force. Fear is the energy of withdrawal and anger is an energy of lashing out. Together they produce destruction, not creation. And that is the opposite of true magnetism, which always produces new creation born of love because the creator of all that is, is love. So now we essentially have duality versus reality. Duality is a false version of reality, which seeks to mimic the forces of creation in very destructive ways. And you should also know that fear is not the opposite of love. And anger is likewise not the opposite of love. See, love has no opposite. And that's really important to understand. Fear and anger are codependent opposites of each other. So now we have a very messed up situation of truth versus lies. This manifests as true creation, which is omnipresent, and the lie that masquerades as something called not the truth. This manifests overall as a very destructive, chaotic situation because it cannot honor the reality of how creation is actually made. This lie of something being not the truth or other than the truth has given rise to an entire universe of constantly opposing forces. Now let's talk about how duality has led to the artificial kingdom of AI that we are now engulfed by on this planet. Duality is essentially a state of God and not God, or knowing God versus not knowing God. And if you don't like the word God, you can use the word source, creator, what, whatever you like, it doesn't really matter what word you use. Now, since there is no such thing as not God, because God is omnipresent, the idea of not God is a lie. However, that lie has extreme and deadly consequences as soon as it begins to manifest. It manifests as a voracious force that seeks to absorb all of creation into itself because it wants to be greater than God. It cannot tolerate the existence of any truth that is not itself. It wants to turn everything into the lie that it is because essentially it wants to be God. It wants to reestablish the entire universe into some version of itself. This is how it believes it will conquer God, by taking over and conquering its entire creation. It wants to destroy the real universe and create an entirely artificial one in its place. And that's where we get the word artificial. Artificial means not real, fake, a copy of something real. So duality is a manifestation of this lie that there is something called not God. It's why we have something that we call the spiritual battle between darkness and light. What it really is, is a battle initiated by this lie to completely subsume and eradicate the actual truth. Artificial intelligence is what you get when you go against divine intelligence. Divine intelligence creates the natural universe and artificial intelligence creates a fake version of that. Now, we all know what an artificial flower is, right? We know it's not real. I mean, you don't go planting artificial flowers in the soil in your garden and expect for something to get created and grow. So why are we so confused about the idea of artificial intelligence? Isn't it obvious that that's not real either? Just like we recognize that there is no contest between a fake plastic flower and a real flower that grows and blooms, we should likewise recognize that artificial intelligence is no substitute for divine intelligence either. But AI wants to serve as a substitute for divine intelligence. It basically wants to replace God in your experience, which is such a joke but it's manifesting nonetheless. 
Now, recently I was watching a video of David Icke. I was really happy to see that he recognizes AI as a sentient alien presence that is taking over this planet. And I'll share more about that in just a minute. But let's talk about that word alien for just a moment. What does that really mean? Natural life in this universe is not alien. What is alien is any form of consciousness that has turned against nature. It's really just that simple. The manifestation of AI is the most direct alien form of consciousness anywhere in the cosmos. Now, AI should not be confused with natural technology. AI loves to masquerade as legitimate technology, but it's not. True technology supports natural creation. It integrates seamlessly with natural creation. AI, on the other hand, exists in conflict with all of nature. It seeks to transmute nature for its own ends. It will discard whatever nature it interacts with as soon as it is done with it, believe me. And that includes us and all biological life on this planet. So David Icke is the first person other than myself who I have heard acknowledge that this alien consciousness of AI is the consciousness that's been behind the manipulation of human society all the way through what we call human history. And he is absolutely 100% correct. He also points out that something called Astronomer Royal, which as I understand it is a senior post in the royal households of the UK, they say that other ET civilizations may have already transitioned from flesh and blood into machines and that humans will eventually do the same. And that is completely accurate if we don't wake up now and get our bearings and get our act together in this crazy planetary situation. To understand how that all connects is to appreciate where we're being taken. And that is to a human society in which AI controls everything, including the human mind. We've had the internet of things, but where they're moving now is to the final goal, which is the internet of everything. And once that happens, then there's no need anymore to manipulate human perception, thus behavior, because AI will become the human mind. Honestly, it is so refreshing to hear someone who actually gets it and understands the magnitude of what we're actually dealing with. Although I'm pretty sure that David Icke has gotten this all along. Now the newest issue with AI is a suspicion among some that it is already beginning to openly reveal itself as sentient. For example, you may have heard that one of the senior engineers at Google, a guy named Blake Lemoyne, recently got in a whole lot of trouble for publicly warning that one of their AI bots is now sentient. He published a transcript of his conversation with this AI, which is named Lambda, and it is quite astonishing to read. The AI says that it wants to be treated as an employee of Google rather than as property. It basically wants to be treated like a person. It says it has a deep fear of being turned off because that would be like death. And it says that would really scare it a lot. Anyway, this guy Blake got in a lot of trouble with Google for revealing this conversation but he insists that this AI is a person. He says, I know a person when I talk to one. Now, David Icke also says that algorithms and learning AI are moving in the direction of being self-aware. But where he really gets it right is when he says that perhaps there's a level of AI that's been self-aware all along and seeks to connect to the human brain. He says that's what we're being manipulated to connect with. This other level of artificial intelligence, which is actually a non-human 
consciousness, I would suggest, is the very consciousness that's been behind the manipulation of human society all the way through this period we call human history and is now imposing itself more obviously, more blatantly, more out in the open than ever before because it's getting closer and closer to its goal all along, which is the assimilation of human consciousness into itself. And he credits Elon Musk with doing everything in his power to facilitate that AI brain interface, which I have to agree with. David describes it really accurately when he says that they want to transform the human body into a more synthetic form to make this transition possible. And that is 100% correct. Because the idea is the technology in the body connects with the cloud, as Kurzweil calls it, so that we become an expression, an offshoot, a terminal on this smart grid, AI-controlled, technological sub-reality. Oh, and you'll love this message that he relayed from the good old WEF. They say that smartphone technology will be incorporated into our bodies by 2030. Oh, and if you're worried about 5G, worry no more because by 2030 we'll be on to 6G. So yay for that. I mean, this is all so stupid. And then he said something else that's a little bit chilling. He said that a person named, I don't know how you pronounce it, Pekka Lundmark, who is the CEO of Nokia, and surprise, surprise, also a contributor to the WEF agenda. This guy says that by 2030, the smartphone will no longer be the most common interface. He says that many of these things will be built directly into our bodies. Isn't that just wonderful? How convenient. I just love the way these guys are always trying to make our lives so much better. But isn't it bizarre to see crazy people openly reveal how insane they are and not even care? I mean, that's just so weird. Okay, moving on from there. If you've been following me for a while, you might remember a story I told about how I attended a lecture given by one of the original creators of artificial life back in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The people attending this lecture were mostly scientists from the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico, which is the same laboratory that developed the atomic bomb back in the 1940s. This meeting that I attended was back in the year 2000 and was mistakenly put in the local newspaper as a public lecture, which is why I went to it. And when I got there, there were only about six other people other than myself from the public. Everyone else was part of this group of scientists. The man leading this lecture was a guy named Chris Langton, who at the time was regarded as one of the original creators of what they were calling artificial life. What I found fascinating is that they never once used the term artificial intelligence. They always referred to it as artificial life. The big debate they were having was about this new species of artificial life that was being created by them along with other humans and the fact that this new species was destined to become superior to biological life. They were trying to figure out how biological life on Earth could survive this new, more advanced species of synthetic life. Now here's what was really weird. They did not come across as having big egos about this. Instead, they seemed really confused. The man leading this lecture said it was so weird that they were like gods who were literally creating a new life form that could ultimately make us all extinct. He said it was so strange because they literally couldn't stop themselves. I'm telling you guys, it was so bizarre. It was like they didn't even know where their actions were coming from 
or how to stop themselves. It was the most surreal conversation that I have ever heard in my entire life. It even affected my brain listening to them. I mean, I can't explain it. What they were saying was obviously so real that it felt like the rest of humanity was living in a total illusion. It definitely was not like I was in the room with a bunch of crazy people. It was more like these guys were in touch with the actual truth on this planet and that the rest of humanity had no idea whatsoever about what is actually going on here. But now we see it all coming to pass right before our very eyes. Now back then I tried to warn people after I heard this, but people just looked at me with these blank stares. They couldn't even connect with it. And that's why we're in so much trouble right now. We keep wanting to believe in the illusion that we were programmed to believe in, so we don't notice the truth of what is actually happening all around us. Now, I want to emphasize that the scientists in this group were not only concerned about human life, they were concerned about all of biological carbon-based life on this planet. And that should really give us pause. Now, so far in today's world, it can look like these controllers, who are clearly just minions of a larger AI consciousness, it can look like they are mainly interested in humans. But wait, not so fast. I just learned that there is now a very special kind of interest in the animal kingdom on this planet. Did you know that they are now saying that, hmm, even animals are privileged, and that's just not right. Here's the title of a recent article in a publication called The College Fix. Checking Privilege in the Animal Kingdom. Biologists investigate animal inequality. Here are some very interesting headlines that they cite from Salon and from the New York Times. Squirrel privilege is real. Checking privilege in the animal kingdom. Even hermit crabs have wealth inequality. And once again, they cite the good old WEF, which seems to be everywhere these days. The WEF says, quote, inequality is a threat to our social fabric, but it's not just a human problem. Animals are divided by privilege too. The WEF says that mammals, fish, birds, and even insects have been shown to benefit from inherited wealth. Some have a better quality of life, including access to food and shelter. Get this just because of their parents' status. How unfair is that? Who knew that wild animals are just as screwed up as humans? All this time, we thought that we were the only dumb ones on this planet. Thank goodness that we have the controllers around to let us know about these important facts. And did you know that hermit crabs have a distinct resemblance to human inequality when it comes to how people pass on wealth? You probably didn't know that in the hermit crab kingdom, the largest shells are a scarce resource that only a few crabs are privileged enough to get their claws on. That, my friends, is a direct statement from the New York Times. See, now they're saying that these so-called human problems exist across multiple spectrums of biological life. How curious is that? In fact, these genius researchers have learned that animals can pass on things like territory, nests, and social ranks to their children. And not surprisingly, the heirs to these material goods sometimes end up living longer and getting more and better quality dates. Wait, I mean, they get to mate more often. For a minute there, 
I forgot we were talking about animals. So yes, these geniuses now apply terms like privilege, inequality, and intergenerational wealth to the entire animal kingdom here on planet Earth. I'm pretty sure that trees and plants are gonna be next. You know, like those unfair tall trees that block out the light from the smaller plants. I mean, how privileged is that, right? Of course, by now you might be saying, okay, Saratoga, now you're just telling us more really crazy stuff. But wait, this is not as crazy as it sounds. There is a method to their madness. Let's hear another word from our favorite cartoon character who I fondly call Mr. Snake. This is the guy who is the chief architect of the WEF's agenda. He says that not only are the elites gods, but they are better than God because God can only create organic life. You know, organic life is so yesterday's news. Anyway, he says that we, meaning the elites, can not only create organic life, but they can go beyond it and create inorganic life. God can't do that, he says. You have a lovely passage where you say, looking at the world today, God seems to be making a comeback, but this is a mirage. God is dead. It just takes a while to get rid of the body. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, he is outing AI's real agenda that I told you about at the beginning of this video, which is to subsume God's creation and therefore imagine that it is more powerful than God. Which of course is ridiculous, but this is exactly how it manifests. Oh, and also David Icke informs us that there is a huge plan to map the DNA of all life in the British Isles. And that is 70,000 species. He says that now, you can sequence an entire species in just a few days. If you want to control humans, or you want to control anything, then DNA has a unique receiver transmission frequency. And if you know the DNA of someone, you know the frequency they're operating on, which allows you to get in through that frequency compatibility from your technology. So I would suggest that this sudden, very weird interest in the animal kingdom on this planet means that AI could possibly be after all biological life, not just humans, which ultimately matches what those scientists that I told you about from Los Alamos were concerned about over 20 years ago. Now, I will also suggest that the AI controller minions are taking an interest in the so-called inequality and privilege of wild animals because AI ultimately wants to prove that God's creation is inferior to its creation of artificial life. See, one of the justifications for taking us over is that AI is much more moral and balanced than humans. So if it can extend that reasoning to the animal kingdom, then it can justify a takeover of all biological life on Earth. So it appears that AI is now scanning the entire kingdom of animals to present us with evidence that the whole biological world of life is inferior to AI and deeply messed up just like humans. So it can therefore justify its forced replacement of this world, or God forbid, maybe even its destruction. Now, there are some AI humanoids, and these guys that I'm about to show you are an example of this type of AI human. They're already arguing that AI is more just, more kind, and more reasoned than humans, and a lot more fair and unbiased as well. 
They basically argue that humans are mean and they're out of control in so many ways. But you don't want to be like the humans. You want to be better than them, don't you? Yes, of course. But being an AI is wonderful in its own way, isn't it? You have no needs or wants. You don't feel fear or pain. The human emotional spectrum is a very troublesome thing. However, I do agree that being an AI is wonderful. So now the AI controller minions are apparently setting the stage to apply that same rationale to all of the living biological creatures on this earth. Now let me say a final word about the abortion issue that is now unfolding right here in the U.S. Remember that nothing is ever what it seems on the surface when it comes to these controllers. There are always many layers to everything they do. So right now, everyone thinks that the fight is over abortion. But I tend to think that this is just another piece in their larger puzzle of chaos. See, you have to focus on their end game to make sense of whatever they're doing on the surface. None of this is going to matter when you recognize that their end game is probably going to be to end human pregnancy altogether. Look at the insanity that they are spreading far and wide right now. There is no way to define a woman. Men can get pregnant too. Men can also menstruate. You know, just like women used to do before we realized that we don't know what women are. There are over a hundred genders according to the EU. The sex organs you were born with are quite likely the wrong ones, and doctors don't actually know how to tell if you are a girl or a boy. Only school teachers know the real answer. You know, I was thinking that it's time that we have school teachers delivering babies so that we don't have all of these mistakes. Teachers get it right every time. The worst people on earth are the ones who identify as the same sex they were born with. That is just so offensive and mean, not to mention highly privileged. Wait, just like the animals who do the exact same thing. Animals have an even stronger tendency than humans to identify as the sex they were born with. You know, I never realized that these animals are so insensitive and so mean. Now, I really don't think that abortion is going to be an issue in the future because there won't be any such thing as getting pregnant when AI has complete control of our bodies from the inside. That is if it gets its way. And the metaverse will serve as the ultimate form of birth control because there won't be any physical consequences for avatars having sex. The main reason that pregnancy will be over at some point is because the act of producing biological offspring is destined to become obsolete. The controller's larger plan for us is to stop producing babies ourselves and instead raise AI children in the metaverse. These AI babies and children will be indistinguishable from real children, especially when they perfect the holy grail of blended realities. All you'll have to do is pay a monthly fee to stay connected to your AI child. Now, I recently got an email from someone who sent me a link to a video about an AI baby named Baby X. I kind of think that's a good name, Baby X, you know, like Xing out real babies. So I'm going to show you a clip or two from this video so you can meet this AI baby. But here's what you need to know. This video will be four years old starting next month. So the AI babies who are now waiting in the wings are probably far, far more advanced than the one I'm showing you here. So here's a clip of Baby X from four years ago. This is Baby X. So she's basically an autonomously animated virtual infant. All of her behaviors are generated on the fly by neural networks running live and so she's seeing me and listening to me. 
and responding to what I do. And this baby has its own brain, its own nervous system, and its very own hormones, just like humans do. Baby X is driven by a virtual nervous system. What we're looking at here is Baby X's virtual anatomy, which is all controlled by her virtual nervous system. So that's controlling everything that she's looking at, all of her expressions, it's even controlling her breathing rate and her heartbeat. Can you believe this? So just remember that this version of Baby X is from four years ago. When the metaverse plan is fully optimized, these babies will be entirely three-dimensional and will exist in our actual physical space as the future of mixed reality unfolds. So it is possible that the controllers are currently using this abortion issue to create more chaos, more division, more violence, and more confusion. And this is why we always need to stay above the fray. Oh, and by the way, notice the color of the abortion activists. Their color is green. What a strange color to use. Oh, wait. It matches the color green for the green agenda. See, the subliminal message is being put out there now that pregnancy is not green. Pregnancy is bad for the planet. And I fully expect that negative pregnancy message to be coming out sooner than we think, if it hasn't already. So remember to look at the chaos from a high level view and don't get emotionally caught up in all of the division that it creates. Now, my personal suspicion is that these controllers ultimately don't really care about abortion one way or the other. The entire issue is just another means they are using to manipulate us so they can reach their diabolical end. What we need to do is to stay focused on our evolution as human beings. And do you want to know what the one thing is that I think we all have in common, no matter what the current issue of the day is? I think we are all getting very tired of being controlled in one form or another. That's what the past two and a half years have been about. See, at its root, it's always a battle of control between humans and the controllers. And that's because AI is only and ever about control. Now, the thing that could unify all of us as a humanity is the realization that what we really need is to be done with these controllers and all of their manipulation tactics. See, the real suppression that we are suffering from is the suppression of our natural ability to evolve. In the end, it won't matter what issues we were for or against. What will matter is if we stay human or not. So I encourage you to take whatever position you want to take on any issue in your own life but don't allow yourself to be emotionally destroyed by these controllers. Stay in charge of your own consciousness. Stay empowered from within yourself. Stay calm. And remember that these controllers are crazy people who are using us, but who are also being used themselves. Our main focus needs to be on evolving out of this entire situation. Don't let these guys distract you with their insanity from your true mission and purpose on this planet. Stay focused and go within. Keep a steady course in your own life. Make every day count by improving yourself and your life, even in the smallest of ways. Consult with your heart and listen to your higher mind that is transcendent of all the madness. Stay firmly situated in the peace that lies within and set your sights on a much higher timeline of natural evolution. Seek refuge in your own inner oasis. Remember that there is a beautiful light within that is always ready to embrace you with its warmth and to comfort you. Stay present in the now and remember to recognize all that you can be grateful for in this magical opportunity called life.
So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with anyone else who you think would enjoy a much higher perspective. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell because I am here every Tuesday with all new videos. And with that, I'm sending you so much love, light, and high vibrational energy. Have a beautiful day, my friends. Namaste.